what is the driverless city? The driverless city is a project that I've been leading here at IIT that was originally funded by the IIT NIAR Prize, which is a new program that funds research that delivers social impact. The fact is, and many of us know this now, that driverless cars are here. And as a result, there's a lot of excitement and nervousness in the world. The excitement is about the possibility of added convenience, of more efficiency in terms of transit, all kinds of possibilities. The nervousness stems from unknown risks and costs. What is known is that Transportation technology almost always changes the relationship between space and time, and that means a lot for our cities. For example, here in Chicago, we experienced our biggest growth when trains and telegraphs arrived. Now, today, we have the combination of information technologies with automobiles, and that's already impacting cities in ways which we're starting to see. So our proposal has been simple. Be proactive. We have to both anticipate but also harness the potential of these new technologies. So we've assembled an interdisciplinary team at IIT of transportation engineers, landscape architects, urban designers, planning lawyers, and architects like myself to clarify the issues but also envision possible futures. One of the fundamental questions is how can we use driverless technology to turn our 20th century transportation infrastructure into 21st century human infrastructure. Based on the historical relationships between urbanization and mobility, we actually know and can expect that the age of driverless cars will be one of substantial change. And again, history is a great teacher. So when the architect, Giambattista Noli, created a map of Rome, in the 1700s, it was so revealing and accurate that it was actually in use until the 1970s, very recently. The fields of urban planning and design were actually born out of the, these kinds of ambitions to actually manage and control the growth of cities. So drawings like the Noli map are not just technical, but also social and political documents. Now, today, we don't make the same kind of maps, but computerized maps haven't actually made the issues any less complicated. In some ways, the complexity has only increased. And so what I would say is that we should reject the notion that digital technology will somehow alone make life different or even better in the driverless city. Driverless or not, cities will still be reflections of our social, political, and cultural values. Technology is always, at best, a means of realizing our dreams. So there's also this question of uncertainty. It's still a big and fundamental problem in our world of changing technology. And so though cities are always changing, accurately predicting these changes is really challenging, if not impossible in many cases. So our team has created a mind map for the driverless city. Mind maps are diagrams used to organize the information within a particular topic or question or problem that you might be trying to solve. So the image that you're seeing up there is very complex. You're not supposed to be able to read all the words. But what I want you to understand is that we've been able to organize the question of the driverless city into four major buckets. Street space, commuter space, delivery space, and parking space. And each space contains many issues which are organized by scale, all the way from ecosystem down to neighborhood, down to the human scale. So the future is really a story full of chance encounters, accidents, and contradictions, as you see from the complexity in the mind map. So in the Driverless City Project, we try to use scenarios as a strategy for starting to cope with all of this. So we created something that we call the Driverless City Scenario Builder. Basically, it's a tool, and it's a set of 100 tokens made of wood and brass, and each one of these tokens is engraved on each side with a term. Most of the terms come from the mind map that you just saw. And basically, it helps people craft short stories about driverless futures. The prototype has been designed and manufactured here in Chicago with industrial designer Martin Kastner. It's beautiful, 
And soon, there will be a card version, which will be open source and available online through our website. And finally, we've also developed a series of videos based on the four spaces from the mind map. And what I'd like to do is show you a short clip from one of those videos, which is about delivery space. The videos are future histories, so they're designed specifically to place our imagination years or decades into the future, looking back. What they do is they create spaces where the possibilities for the driverless city can be better understood. So can I have the lights down a little bit and the video up, please? Platooning vans disperse regionally to irrigate markets with fresh produce. At the same time, electronics, furniture, and even autonomous vehicles produced through the vast global supply chain are also ubiquitous. The need for social connection and the demand for hyper-specialized goods has assured the viability of in-place retailing throughout the region. Purchases made in person can be located and transferred from a truck house and delivered within minutes or hours to any location. Persistent trade imbalances with China and Southeast Asia have led to networked markets for recycling. UPCSX fills empty containers with waste products for return trips. The consequent closing of landfills has therefore become a significant planning challenge for public authorities, hoping to recoup some value from those sites. With the ability to detect potential collisions, including wildlife, from long distances, roadkill has become largely a thing of the past, thus contributing to overpopulation of certain species. In response to homeowners' complaints about deer, coyotes, and other large mammals, the states of Illinois, Michigan, and Indiana relaxed regulation and opened new areas of hunting throughout the territory. Many former drivers and warehouse workers have developed seasonal hunting and trapping services. They supply on-demand food with fresh meats, catering to the public's appetite for regionally specific foods. The popularity of locally sourced cuisine contrasted greatly with the nearly complete outsourcing of most other forms of production. The vast tracts of warehouses abandoned by industrial property developers and third-party logistics companies have also proven to be fertile ground for many gray market industries. These vast landscapes of exchange, born in the 19th century, had served their purpose and now needed a new role to play in the 21st century. Once separated from our cities and hidden from view, they became testing grounds for new forms of production and civic life. So as you can see, we're just at the beginning of a story that's going to stretch years, decades, or more into the future. What our team has tried to do is set us on the path by developing social scenarios, technical solutions, infrastructural prototypes, and grand visions for the future of the driverless city. Thank you.